be here and to uh, be on this panel today. Uh, this is my first time at this meeting. I uh, feel very fortunate to have been able to come and join you. Thanks for, to Suzanne for inviting me uh, and to the committee for organizing the meeting. I'm going to uh, talk about a topic that I think may be uh, may not have been part of the conversation uh, at this meeting or maybe not explicitly. I suspect that a lot of what I have to say has been implicitly part of your conversation. Um, words like values, uh, talking about values and focusing on the values that uh, people have and uh, why those are drivers of um, vaccine acceptance uh, or vaccine hesitancy, as the case may be, I think are important. Um, uh, I heard a lot of, to me in my language, I heard a lot about pushing messages out to people this morning. One thing I want to focus on is how to attract people, how to pull people to us. Uh, I think that's at least as important, if not more important, than pushing messages out. Um, so I want to focus on some of those things and bring a perspective to you, a kind of way, a methodology of doing social marketing, so building on some of the things that Suzanne said. So I'm going to talk about creating demand for HPV vaccination, which to me is about creating uh, value, basically creating the idea for people that vaccination is offering them value, that it's something that they critically must have. Um, and I'm going to talk about branding and social marketing strategies as a way of doing that. If I can get the slide to advance. Ah, there we go. So just a quick outline of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to define branding uh, in the context of health promotion. I'm going to talk a, just a little bit about health brand, the idea of health branding, which is a, a big focus of my work, and behavior change theory. Uh, I'm going to talk about it as a kind of multi-level approach, as a way of kind of making decisions easy for people. I think one risk we have, especially in the world of vaccination, is that it's a, it's a complex subject, it's science-based, it requires a lot of rational thought. Um, most of, all of us actually don't work that way, even experts. Um, you know, it's only been in the last few tens of thousands of years that we've become able to think like that. Um, our um, system one, in the, in the um, Daniel Kahneman uh, terminology, really dominates our thinking, basically heuristics, our emotional response, uh, our fast thinking, um, uh, and branding is able to deal with that, I think, quite effectively. So I think we need to, to focus on that. Um, it's true that branding has been very effective in demand creation in a lot of other areas. I'm going to quickly illustrate that, and then I'm going to quickly give you a case study of the very, very early stages, the beginning of an effort to brand HPV vaccination in, uh, in an African uh, country context. So I guess I would ask this group maybe, are we the client or are we the agency? Um, so here are the clients and the, uh, and the marketers in a, in, a, uh, con in a consultation session, psychoanalysis maybe, uh, and they, we picked one ad and they, and they keep working on the other one. Uh, it's like they're not even listening to us. Is that the client or is that the agency? Uh, all they do is nag, nag, nag. Um, so we could ask that question. Um, you know, what, what are we doing here? Are we coming up with the message or are we the recipients of the message and are we in the, my, in the position of being the recipients? Uh, brands, what, what, what am I talking about by a brand, right? So is this a brand? Right, here's my iPhone. It's a branded product, right? This thing is not the brand, right? That thing that you're holding up and snapping a photo of my slide there, um, which thank you for doing that. It makes me feel I'm validated now. Um, uh, is not, that's not the brand. The brand is, first of all, one of three things, what it stands for, the position, right? What do I represent, right? So it's what I, it's what I as the consumer think about the iPhone, right? The second thing is, and this is how a marketer would talk about it, the persona, right? So Apple has a persona. Like you would, you would conjure up certain words if I were to have time to ask you to you know, survey the audience here, app, things that Apple represents. Simplicity, elegance, it's almost a friend of mine who actually used to work for Samsung, the competitor, right? Uh, a fashion accessory, that was a little bit of a you know, snide comment on his part, right? So it's, it's, uh, it has all these associations, right? So if, you were, if it were to become a person, it would be a certain kind of person, right? The face of the Apple iPhone would be, 
right? Some kind of person that we might imagine, right? Those are things that you as the marketer control, right? You can create an, an, uh, an interpretation, a representation, I should say, in the mind of the consumer of what your product represents. And then that, in essence, becomes the product, right? So one question I would ask is, what is the current uh, brand position and personality of vaccination? Vaccination in here in France, in the European Union, in another country, the United States, Africa, right? I'm sure it differs, but that's an answerable question, right? We, could me we can actually measure that. Uh, and, then the and those are things that we get to decide. We can come up with that. We can decide, this group could decide what we want the brand position and personality of vaccination to be, maybe in a certain context. But then the question is, how are we going to execute against that, right? How are we going to run a campaign to try to get more people to vaccinate, to create demand for vaccination, right? Apple's done a really good job of creating demand for their products. Every time they come out with a new iPhone, gigantic event, big launch event, they're pulling people, right? That's what I mean by pull. They don't have to run a big advertising campaign. They don't. They, are attract, they have reached a high pinnacle of branding where they're able to simply pull people in because of what they stand for, right? We're not gonna get there right away, but that's a goal, right? But the question is, what do people experience? Do you do a good job of, of projecting, that's the, that's the push, right? Pushing that persona, that positioning out into the world and getting people to respond to it. I'm conscious, I'll use up all my time here. Um, that's not just a shoe. Right? So that's the Kobe Bryant all-star shoe. I like to use this in my class to you know, get students to kind of talk about it a little bit. Right? Uh, it doesn't cost that much anymore because Kobe Bryant's retired now. Right? So what that represents is, has been decreased somewhat. But at one point, not too long ago, it cost 220 US dollars. Right? Who would pay 220? I have a pair of shoes, uh, sneakers in my room that I paid $40 for. 40, dollars for Nike shoes, right? Yeah, they're functionally pretty equivalent, maybe, you know, and there's a few things you can do in these that you can't do in mine, but they're pretty close. 40 versus 220. Why would somebody pay that much more? And why do, why do I care? Why, why does it matter? That's a price premium, right? That's a branding concept. Somebody is willing to invest more, right? Suzanne talked about exchange. Somebody's willing to invest more, it matters more to them to have those shoes because they're making a statement. They represent something. That says something to other people, right? That's going to pull people to me. Now, I'm co-branded with the Los Angeles Lakers and Kobe Bryant. I've associated myself with something positive, right? How can we associate vaccination with something positive? Brands are about identities, right? It's not people think, oh, I have a logo, therefore I have a brand. I've branded my program, yay. No. No, no, no. That, that would be the thing at the end of the pipeline after you've gone through a process of thinking about what you want to be when you grow up, what do you represent to the world, what do you want people to think about you, how do you want them to think about you. It's an identity, a representation in the consumer's mind, right? Uh, and basically it's about a, uh, associations, beliefs that I have about benefits, right? People are very responsive to benefits. They're also responsive to consequences, to loss. Uh, but especially when it comes to, to um, uh, what I'm talking about today, they're very responsive to benefits. Um, functional benefits, yes, but especially social and emotional benefits, right? Something's fun. It's easy. It's sexy, right? Uh, products, that one key point I'm making is that products, services, organizations, the things we usually think of as being branded, uh, yes, obviously they can be branded. We know that. Behaviors can be branded, too. Ideas can be branded, right, very effectively. And they have been. Um, just very quickly, uh, branding is not just sort of marketing speak, right? It's not just something that people who, you know, work in, you know, in London or in New York, you know, gin up these ideas and just shoot them out there to the world. They're based on theory. Uh, and there are constructs from, uh, there's a construct that we use in, in branding to measure the effectiveness of brands called brand equity. It's basically a validated multidimensional scale that is highly predictive of behavioral uptake. If people have high brand equity in a brand, in a branded program, right, they're much more likely to do that thing. Uh, a lot of my research is based on this, this construct, and I've tested it across a whole wide range of settings and found that it works very consistently. 
Uh, it's based, it has a basis in behavioral theory, like the social cognitive theory, the integrated model that's been talked about today. Basically, as I'm referring to them, brands are social marketing strategies to encourage behavior change. We all know that this has been done inc incredibly effectively uh, in the commercial world, but you know, th this is not, on the right-hand side, you do have uh, an advertisement for a brand of cigarettes, right, Newport. Uh, and that is positioning behavior in the mind of, not with respect to the, the product, no, 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 you couldn't do that. It's people are having fun, they're active, right? And that's associated with the product. Here, we have behavior being, on the left, behavior being positioned in a more basic way, right? There's actually no product promotion here. She's just cool and good looking, and she smokes, right? And she's on the cover of Vogue, right? So p behavior has been positioned as socially desirable, something we want, right? Uh, demand has been created for the product, right? Uh, the same thing has been done uh, in social and behavior change programs. So a very famous campaign uh, in the United States called Truth, right? The Truth Campaign. They positioned behavior. They created demand for a product. What is that product? Uh, by pointing out a lot of information about the harmful effects of tobacco and the fact that there is an industry that is in the business, the business of selling you that product which will then kill you, right? So 1,200 people approximately die every day from smoking related illnesses. I think the number is slightly lower now in the United States, comes out to 400 and some odd thousand people every year, right? What does that many body bags look like piled up in front of uh, a fictitious tobacco industry headquarters, right? Why does that matter? Well, I can be part of something. There's an exchange. I can join something. I can be part of a movement, right? You can attract me to want to be part of that movement. You can create demand. You can pull me in, right? By creating an identity for a brand, there's something for me to do, right? So a lot of times people worry, well, talking about branding and behavior, well, yeah, I get that I can go buy this. That's the outcome variable that Apple cares about. What's the outcome variable for truth? Well, maybe it's this idea of brand equity and truth, that I'm willing to do stuff, that I will actually go out and engage and join in a movement against tobacco, right? So thinking about what can the person do to be part of the brand. Truth really took this seriously. They were one of the early social marketing campaigns that really took the idea of branding very seriously and demonstrated that brands can increase demand for behavior change. Basically, what they thought about is that they are operate the, the, just the concept that if you forget about everything else I've said, just take this away, that uh, it, think of yourself as operating in a marketplace, right? Uh, you, there, is, there is the possibility that people will vaccinate and the possibility that they will not, right? You're trying to take market share away from the non-vaccination part of that marketplace, right? So you could use different terms, and I see that one of my words has been cut off here, but just think of this as representing a marketplace, right? Think about teenagers. What do they want? They want to be empowered and they want to be rebellious. They don't want to be controlled, and the word that's missing there is preached to, right? They don't want people preaching to them, right? So that may define a marketplace. Uh, back in the day, a long time ago, hopefully in the lower, uh, the bad quadrant to be in, preaching and controlling, that was where public health was. We were basically telling you don't smoke, you're bad. If you smoke, you'll die if you smoke. Teenagers don't care about that. They, what, what they were impressed by was the tobacco industry who was empowering and uh, allowing them to rebel. The truth, truth campaign said, oh, we can outdo you, right? We can position ourselves we can pull more of you in, and in fact, they've been incredibly successful. The smoking rates are down to 6% or so in the United States among teenagers, right? Um, not just because of truth, because of a lot of things, including policies, I admit. But they, that was the strategy, right, to outposition the tobacco industry uh, and take market share away. That is a perspective on what you're doing, right? And communication is part of that, but it's more than that. It's the, it's the elements that Suzanne talked about. Uh, Branding, yeah, that sounds great. That's not what we do in public health, right? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, a lot of people have done it in public health, and it's incredibly effective. Um, I've done a, a fair amount of systematic review work, uh, meta-analysis work on uh, campaigns that, based on a set of criteria, are defined as branded. Um, this is a worldwide phenomenon. There are branded campaigns all around the world. Um, they're on a whole lot of different topics. 
this review is somewhat outdated at this point. I'm actually working on an update of it. But as of about four years ago, this was the number of branded programs in public health that I could identify. And basically what we, we found was they're more effective on average than campaigns that are not branded. Basically, they have larger effect sizes. Many of them have extremely, in public health terms, extremely large effect sizes. Um, and so this is important, right? We know there is there's a, a strong and growing evidence base that this approach works. So can vaccination be branded like tobacco control or HIV prevention? We know those that um, we can create demand in those areas, that branding does work in those areas. Um, to my knowledge, there has been, has been no systematic efforts to brand vaccination in the sense that I mean uh, in this presentation. So that's a challenge for us. Well, what do we know from the literature on HPV vaccination promotion in general? So I've done a systematic review on this that's unpublished. Um, there is a substantial, very substantial literature, as all of you know, I'm sure, on HPV uh, and cervical cancer awareness and risk perceptions. Uh, there's a much more limited literature on communication and social marketing efforts. Most of it is from rich countries. Um, uh, and I have found no published studies on the effectiveness of branding for HPV vaccination. So um, limited evidence in this area, um, but we do find that HPV vaccination from healthcare provider, as many of you have already talked about in the context of other vaccination, highly influential. Um, uh, this is just a quote from uh, one campaign in Cameroon, I won't read that to you, but basically indicating that um, um, health workers are effective in promoting HPV. Uh, but there's limited evidence on, on promotion suggests that there's a need for new efforts to see whether or not this branding approach I'm talking about can in fact work. Just trying to stay on my time here. So I have a new project. I'm new to vaccination. This is not an area that I've worked in. I'm a a person who works across a lot of different areas. I have a toolkit and I, you know, I go work on different jobs, so to speak. Uh, and vaccination is my, my latest job. Um, so I'm working with a couple of groups, uh, Girl Effect and Gavi, um, uh, on uh, HPV vaccination in several African countries. And we're starting in Rwanda, uh, where my partner Girl Effect has an established presence. Um, and it's, uh, this, this effort is based on an existing brand that's been developed by Girl Effect called Ninja Minga. And the research question is basically how to adapt branding efforts to promote HPV PV vaccination. So we're just getting started. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some of the design and the formative work um, to report on now. Year from now, less than a year from now, we should have some uh, results from an experiment that we're going to be doing on the effectiveness of these efforts, sorry. Uh, so, uh, as I said, Ninja Minga, or N Ninja Minga, or NN, is an existing brand. It's a source of health information. Um, this is just a, a, a quote here in uh, local language uh, from the Baza Shangazi. The Baza Shangazi is kind of your, um, uh, in the United States, what, what was she called? Uh, the the uh, aunt uh, who you wrote letters to... Um, uh, yeah, you're, well, your ag you're agony aunt, yeah, but in the United States there was another, a dear, dear Abby, yeah, right. So the person that you trust, right, your kind of auntie that you would talk to, that you would tell things to, right, uh, the person you can tell everything to. So basically this brand is in a magazine and there's a radio show. Um, it's one of the most accessible and trusted sources of information for health among, um, among school-age girls, the target age in Rwanda. Um, it's a source of information also uh, that parents rely on. So it's an established platform, right? Maybe we can build a vaccination, HPV vaccination program on that. And so basically that's the idea. Um, we're developing a project where uh, the aims are to use branding to improve knowledge of HPV vaccine, a positive attitudes, and intention to act, going to a health facility and or getting vaccinated. Um, and this will be examined through three pieces of research. Um, we've done some of the first part, which is basically formative research. Suzanne talked about the importance of that. We would never dream of trying to develop a program like this without really having a detailed understanding of the audience. Uh, and then we're gonna go through some steps of doing uh, eventually an efficacy study, a more uh, detailed study to examine which kinds of messages, branded versus unbranded, in particular direct and indirect messages are most effective. You can see a timeline here. Um, We've already done some formative research. Um, actually, we found that girls hold positive views of vaccines generally. 
uh, when you just ask them about sort of their attitudes towards vaccination, it's positive, right? Of course, now it's not in the context of being stuck and so forth. Um, sorry. Uh, finish off quickly here. But however, they're developing negative attitudes towards the HPV vaccines specifically. Um, part of that is because of the experience of other girls. There are normative uh, beliefs spreading within the community among girls who've gotten the shot. Um, uh, but um, what we found is that for a lot of topics, not vaccines, but for a lot of other topics, the Ninyaminga brand can play a major role in improving attitudes about things that are not necessarily favored. So we think that providing HPV vaccines should focus on the purpose of the vaccine, why, are you, why would you want to get it, the dosage, how much of it, why, and when, and to try to reduce these anxieties through, um, through using the Ninyaminga platform. So there are different levels of knowledge of the HPV vaccine. Um, we're concerned about the source, uh, and we're concerned about who is delivering the message. Uh, the reason we think that the Ninyaminga platform, the brand, can be an effective uh, who is that it's already a trusted source. It already represents something positive to, to the girls, to the population. So we think that if um, the Baza Shangazi is talking about getting the HPV vaccine, right, that she's going to have, she's going to represent uh, a, a trusted source. And it's not just what she's saying, it's who's saying it and the context in which she's saying it, the context of saying it within the brand, if you will. Um, another thing we're concerned about is rumors about HPV vaccinations. There seems to be a lack of systematic, reliable, trusted information about HPV that leaves girls, uh, leaves them exposed to rumors. Basically, we think that the brand can help to eliminate those rumors, right, or remove, reduce them. Um, this is just a, a quote here, and I'm, I'm just flying through this because I'm over my time. Um, some girls have had negative experience towards uh, HPV vaccination. Um, part of that is because of lack of information. Um, there's a general association with needles, which came up earlier. Um, a lot of girls, especially the younger ones, believe the needle is painful, develops a fear, um, and so a lot of girls report having uh, run away or basically avoided getting the vaccination when they were supposed to. Um, there's also some contradiction we've discovered in the formative research between what the vaccinators are saying and what the girls are saying. So the provider is saying one thing uh, about the experience, the girls are saying something quite different. We need to reconcile those differences and try to reduce that, um, uh, that disagreement. Hopefully the brand can help us to do that. So basically we're developing a health seeking behavior model to try to demonstrate a successful demand model at low operational cost. Uh, we think that this approach can work in vaccination because it has worked in so many other topic areas. I recognize that there are distinct challenges in vaccination that don't exist elsewhere, um, but we wanna study this and see how branding can be most effectively applied, what lessons from the literature that we already have on branding uh, are applicable, and what new things we need to, to try and to adapt. So I'll stop there, having gone over my time. Sorry about that.